Morning, gents. Now, um, we'll stand for quiet prayer and get our uniforms in order. Okay, so first of all, I just hope you're all well. Um, you and your families, make sure to stay inside, all the rest. So we'll just get into the lessons straight away and we'll look at the learning intentions. So number one, we'll identify the PQE structure. This is something a couple of you had difficulty with. Um, it's point, quote, and explain. That is our paragraph structure for most questions, for longer questions. Next up, compare your answers to the sample answers. So you're gonna have your answers open along with this. So on one tab, you'll have me and me speaking in my voice and the video. And then on the other tab, you'll have your own questions, whether that's on OneNote or Teams or Microsoft Word, whatever it is, wherever you have those questions, could even be in your copy. Okay, next. Oh, and with that comparison, you're just basically looking at, well, what's the difference between Mr. T's answers and my answers? You know, what is the difference there? Are his longer? Or does, he, does he have some quotes where I don't have quotes? Um, you know, that kind of thing. Next up, select one area that you're going to focus on for the chapter 15 question. So for the next set of questions you're going to get, which should be released tomorrow, you have to think about, well, what am I going to focus on? You can't bring everything into the next lesson. You know, you, you'll just be overrun. So try to pick one thing. I'm really going to focus on the PQE structure, or I'm really going to focus on the description question that we're going to get, or I'm really going to focus on, you know, using metaphors or onomatopoeia or whatever it is. Pick one thing. I recommend the PQE structure. Anyway, speaking of the PQE structure, Let's get into it. What exactly is it? How do I use it in my answer? So I'm going to skip to the bottom here and I have a sample question. So the question here is, does the fear of smog still live on in the people of Eskeroth? Explain your answer with reference to the text. Now, this part here, the explain your answer with reference to the text, that is telling us that this is a PQ question. It wants a reference to the text. It wants a quotation. So that lets us know we need PQ structure. So, that is the question, and I've included some of the text to help us answer that question. So, I'm going to read the text here. This comes from the end of chapter 14 of The Hobbit. Their plans were soon made, with the women and the children, the old and the unfit. The master remained behind, and with him were some of the men of crafts and many skilled elves, and they busied themselves felling trees and collecting the timber sent down from the forest. Then they set about raising many huts by the shore against the oncoming winter, and also under the master's direction, they began the planning of a new town, designed more fair and large than ever even before, but not in the same place. They were moved northward higher up the shore, for ever after they had a dread of the water where the dragon lay. He would never again return to his golden bed, but was stretched cold as stone, twisted upon the floor of the shallows. There, for ages, his huge bones could be seen in the calm weather amid the ruined piles of the old town. But few dared to cross the cursed spot, and none dared to dive into the shivering water or recover the precious stones that fell from his rotting carcass. So I know I'm going to have to take a quotation from that to prove that people are still afraid of smoke. So the people of Lake Town, or Eskeroth, both the same thing, are still afraid of smog. And I have to look through this bit of text here that I just read to pick out, well, what quotation, what part of that, what small line best tells us that, you know, people are still afraid of smog. So I've broken up my answer into PQE, uh, yellow for point, uh, green for quote, and blue for explain. So as you can see here, point. Use the keywords of the question in your answer and make your point. So you're going to try and rephrase the question or use the keywords of the question in your point. Next up is your quote section. So you use a piece of the text to help you support your point, And this is basically your evidence. So just like in a court of law, we can't accuse someone of something without evidence. You can't make a point without some evidence. And that evidence has to come from the text. And then finally, explain. Finish your answer by fully explaining what this quote proves. So you really just need to, to fully explain and come back to the question in that explain part. So let's look at my answer. The yellow section, the point. 
The people of Estroth still fear Smaug even long after he's dead. So I'm agreeing with the question, does the fear of Smaug still live on, live on in the people of Estroth? My first sentence, my point is, yes, they are still afraid of Smaug. Then I go on to the green section, the quote, and I explain, or sorry, I say, the people of Lake Town avoids, uh, avoid Smaug's final resting place, as can be seen from the line, quotation, few dared to cross the cursed spot. So that's the line that I've taken directly from the text, as you can see here. Few dared to cross the cursed spot. That line proves that the people are still afraid of Smaug. And I go on to explain the blue section here at the end. This lets us know that the people of Lake Town still felt the menace of Smaug and were terrorised by his memory even after his demise. So, my entire answer there, the people of Escrot still fear Smaug even long after he's dead. The people of Lake Town avoid Smaug's final resting place, as can be seen in the line, a few dared cross the cursed spot. This lets us know that the people of Lake Town still felt the menace of Smaug and were terrorised by his memory even after his demise. So, longer than some of you might think, but that is really what we're looking for. When we get into second year, third year, this is how we'll be answering questions. And if we can get started on that early, that will really build us up, okay? This is not the only quotation that I could have picked, if you dare to cross the cursed spot. There are other things I could have said as well. Um, for example, if we look here, um, forever after they had a dread of the water where the dragon lay. So dread is just fear as well. So I could have used that quote just the same as the one I did actually end up using. So it's up to you what quote you choose, whichever one you think best suits your point. Now, with that in mind, let's have a look at the questions. Let's just go through each one question by question. So I think we've done the first learning intention, identify the PQE structure. Keep that in your mind. Next up, we're going to compare your answers to the sample answers. This is something you're going to have to do at home. As I said, have your questions beside you so you can compare them. Okay, so question one. The town of Escroth is also known by what name? Why do you think it got this nickname? Okay, so Escroth is all, the answer is of course, Escroth is also known by the name of Lake Town. The reason for this is that Escroth is situated upon a large lake. Now, that's all we need for that question, two sentences, but it's important to note that there are two different parts of this question. The town of Escroth is also known by what name? Answer being Lake Town. And then why do you think it got its nickname? Because obviously it's on a lake. Now I started off with an easy question, but that doesn't mean we can use the same short structure for the rest of our questions. Question number two. What is the name of the character with the grim voice? What is your first impression of this character? Now, again, there are two parts to this because there are two question marks in the question. So the first part I answer with, the character with the grim voice is named Bard. And then I go on to the kind of PQE part of this. Bard is a brave character. Yellow, that's my point. He's brave. Now I need to give evidence. And we can see this when we hear that his friends had, quotation, friends had accused him of prophesizing floods and poisoned fish, though they knew his worth and courage. This lets me know that the people closest to him can see his valor or bravery. So with my explanation there, I'm saying that even his friends can see that he is brave. Okay. Now, I'll get on to how exactly we can find these quotes in just a little bit. Okay. But it's important that we have the text in front of us, whether that's the online text or our book, the book itself. Okay. Question three. In your own opinion, what line best describes the destruction Smaug brought upon the town? Explain your answer. So this has an explain your answer and it also is asking me for a line. So I know that this is going to be a PQE question. Okay. So, in my opinion, the line that best describes the destruction cast upon the town is Fire leaped from thatched roofs and wooden beam ends as he hurtled down and passed and round again. Tolkien uses personification here to make the fire seem like a living thing, jumping from building to building, ravaging through Lake Town. Okay, so I've said this is the best line that shows the destruction. 
And then I say, why this is the best line? Because Tolkien uses personification here to make the fire seem like a living thing. So I'm describing, this is my favorite line because the use of personification and it shows the havoc that is brought to Lake Town. Now, I'm just gonna double check something here mm, quickly. Have I spelled Tolkien correctly? Let's see, I-E-N, I haven't. That's why they put rubbers on pencils. So even I make mistakes uh, quite a lot, as you already know. But anyway, moving on to question four. Why could Bard understand the thrush? The thrush is the little bird. And again, second part of the question, where did we hear of the thrush before? So it's really important that you answer each part of the question. Otherwise, if I answer half the question, I'm only getting half the marks. Okay, so I say Bard could understand the thrush because he was of the race of Dale. So I have my quotation in there that proves that this is why. And I also go on to explain. People from Dale, especially royalty, were said to understand the language of the thrush. We saw... We saw this exact thrush in chapter 12 when Bilbo tells the dwarves of Smaug's one weakness while the thrush was listening intently. So if you're going back to, to look for these quotes, it, it can be quite hard to find the exact line you're looking for. So let's say we're on chapter 14. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to chapter 14 online. And if I hold down control or command and press F, we get this find window up here. And I can actually just look for certain keywords. So I know I'm looking for thrush. So I can just click in thrush and then it brings me straight to the section where the thrush has, is mentioned. So if I read around this area, I'll figure out the answer and I'll also be able to pick out a quote. So that's just kind of a, a quick way of it's I wouldn't say cheating but helping you get those answers skimming those answers to find the quotes to find the right answers so let's see if we found a useful answer his companions were leaving him he bent his bow for the last time suddenly out of the dark something fluttered to his shoulder he started but it was only an old thrush unafraid it perched by his ear and brought him news marveling he found he could understand its tongue for he was of the race of dale so he could understand its tongue, for he was of the race of Dale. That is a quotation that will help us answer that question. Okay. So that the control F function and having that text online is really, really helpful um, for answering these questions. Next up, descri describe Smaug's demise or death in your own words. Now, a couple of things I wanted here um, from you guys. This is a describe question. It's a description question. So we have to use our techniques of description. So the things we're looking for here, and I'll type them in here. We're looking for show, don't tell. Where we don't just say Smaug died. We have to create images, create pictures of how Smaug died. Like um, the arrow plunged into his breast and he plummeted from the sky into the lake. So they're very different, showing, not just telling. Next up, we want to we want to use our vocabulary here. Instead of just saying, you know, Smaug fell, we said Smaug plummeted. So the use of vocabulary there can really change your description. Next up, things like onomatopoeia can bring your your uh, description to life. So the arrow whistled through the air and the twang of the bow. Those really bring your work to life. Metaphors as well. Comparing something without using like as or then. And the last thing that I've used in here is short sentences. Because this is a really suspenseful scene, it's a real action-packed scene, using short sentences will up the pace and then, you know, up the suspense. So it's kind of like, if you're watching a horror film and you know we go to quick edits, that can up the suspense. Also, if we're um, watching that horror scene, you know things are going really fast, the music is going really fast, and we kind of need to mimic that. We need to copy that with our writing, and how to do that is using short sentences. 
So let's have a read here of my description of Smaug's demise. The gems on Smaug's underbelly sparkled in the moonlight as he soared above the torched village. Below, the grim-voiced bard mounted a final assault. He pulled from his quiver a black arrow. This he had been saving, as it was his most prized possession, an heirloom given to him by his father. He notched the relic astride his bow, and as he drew, a thrush landed on his shoulder. The little bird drew his attention to the hollow in the voracious beast's left breast. A chink in his armour. With a silent prayer, he released the arrow. Twang! The arrow whistled through the air and found a home in the dragon's exposed breast. With a final and blood-curdling shriek, the beast plummeted into the lake and his fire was quenched at last. So, show don't tell. Again, as I said, we have the gems on the Smaug's underbelly sparkled in the moonlight. This is showing. Oops. So it's show don't tell. I've completely forgotten to write these down. Uh, your vocabulary, which we said plummeted instead of fell. Next up, we said onomatopoeia. O-N-O-M-A-T-O-P-O-E-I-A. Pop quiz. Write it down three times in your copy. Uh, next up, uh, metaphors. And you can pause there to write down onomatopoeia three times in your copy. So metaphors. And the metaphor I've used here is a chink in his armor. So saying that there's a little chip taken out of his armor at the hollow in his left breast. He's not wearing armor, of course. He's a dragon that would look incredibly silly. But his armor is his scales. Okay. So that is my metaphor there, a chink in his armour, it's a, a chip taken out of his armour, essentially. Okay, and finally, I had some short sentences as well to up the suspense. So that is, so we saw the vocabulary with plummeted, the onomatopoeia with the twang and the whistled, the metaphors with the chink in his armour, and then the short sentences right around here, silent prayer, twang, arrow whistled through the air, found a home in the dragon's exposed breast just ups the intensity there okay we're nearly there lads keep going keep pushing um and next up question six the final question here how do the people of lake town feel about thorin and his company at the end of this chapter would you feel the same way if you were in their position and i have said at the end of this chapter the people of lake town are furious with thorin and his company as they realize that it was their greed and pride that led to the destruction of escroth I think I would feel the same as the people of Lake Town because it is absolutely the company's fault for awakening Smaug and turning him toward Eskaroth. So, if it's asking me how would I feel, I need to say, in my opinion, or I think I need to use that word, I, me, or those words, I, me, or my. You need to give your own opinion. Okay? So, those are just a couple of things that we can work on for chapter 15 questions this sheet will be available uh, OneNote, Teams, through email whatever it is, you can get it to you also links in the description never thought I'd say that um, <clears throat> but we'll try and get some links in the description there and some timestamps uh, next up, I just want to go through some feedback um, so a couple of things to remember include the keywords of the question in your answer next up answer all parts of the question Try and keep to the PQE structure. That's another really important one. And the last point is fully explain your answer. Really give a reason. Really answer the question being asked. Okay. Some people, you know, I got some answers with just three words and it, it's really not enough. So base your answers somewhat off the answers that I have given here. Okay. I want to just take this time at the end of this video to thank the guys who did submit this work, who did the work, who read the chapter. It's for you guys that I'm doing this video. It's for you guys that the chapter 15 questions will be coming up. Those of you who haven't done it, you need to get on it. This is not a time just for chilling out, relaxing. We need to do a little bit of work if we are going to do higher level English. Okay. So keep on top of this. I don't want to have to be ringing people um, well, I won't won't be ringing you guys. I'll be ringing parents. I'll be emailing people. Let's get our work done. Okay, good work, guys. Chat to you again soon. Take it easy. Goodbye and good luck.